be teaching you how to create the Batman logo in GIMP. Your finished product will look something like this. As you can see, it's very Batman-y, very logo-y, hence the name. So, first off, you want to open up GIMP. I already have mine open. And click File New to create a new image. Now, if you want to use my settings that I'll be using in the rest of the video, you want to use 640 by 400 pixels, but you can always scale it down afterwards. Choose your size, click OK. Now, you want to take your oval tool, your ellipse select tool, and select what your Batman logo, the entire thing, will look like, the size and shape of it. So I'll be using something like that, maybe a bit longer. Okay, so now you want to take your bucket fill tool, set the foreground color as black, and click inside your selection to fill it with that black. Now go select, shrink, and shrink by 20 pixels. At least that's what I'm using. And set your foreground color as a nice yellow color, like that. Click OK, and click inside of your selection. Now click select shrink once more and shrink this time by 15 pixels. Now you want to go to your layers dialog and click on this page icon to create a new layer which has to be transparent. So set the layer fill type on transparency and click OK. Set your foreground color as black and click inside of the selection. Now click select none. Now you should have two layers, one black, one a yellow circle with a border. And it gives you this sort of nice color differentiating, that's a big word, um, border effect. Now you want to take your ellipse select tool, click and drag and press shift. Hold shift. And this will give you a circle, perfect circle, which I will use about that size. And this is going to be basically where your shoulders are. Your bat's shoulders, not your shoulders. Now make sure that you're on your black layer and click edit, cut. Now you're going to move this over to the other side and repeat the same thing. As you can see I'm back and I've finished this circle. You want to try and make them as symmetrical as possible because it doesn't turn out well at the end if you have one shoulder farther up and one shoulder farther down. So now you want to take your rectangle select tool so click a fuzzy rectangle and select pretty much the head of your bat. Now you want to click edit cut and just cut that bat's head off. So now you should have half of the neck and your shoulders and your wing tips actually as you can see they've formed. Now you want to take your path tool which looks like a, an old fashioned fountain pen with a string coming out of it and you want to create a path by clicking somewhere around the base of your neck and higher up almost to the top of the circle and down here and create almost like an M shape like that this is going to be your Batman's head so try and make it in the shape of that what I'm going to do is roughly like that move that over and as you bend you'll see these squares come out which you can move to more accurately choose how your selection is curved your path so like that, that. The more time you take, the better it'll look. I'm doing a fast job, so it probably won't look very good. But that's okay, because it's just a tutorial. There's no art class. Well, actually, kind of is, but there's no. Oh, forget it. Okay, so once you have your path, which this is okay, you're going to go to your tool options for your path tool and click selection from path. This should give you, obviously, a selection in the shape of your Batman's head. Now you're going to take your fill bucket tool once more, the foreground color as black, and click inside your selection. Now click select, none, and as you can see, we now have our bat's head. Now we're going to take our ellipse select tool again, and select a oval, kind of like that. Now you don't want the sides to be too far out or else it turns out really badly in the end which has happened to me many times and this is like the fourth time I'm recording this so about like that which gives you some nice wings and you can take your rectangle select tool with the mode set on subtract from the current selection and select uh, almost half or uh, about like that and click edit cut select none 
and this should give you kind of a smiley face. It looks like your bat is smiling. And you're going to take once more your path tool, which I described before for you. Click about the base of your neck, down almost at the bottom, and up at the top again, at the other base of your neck. Move this over and curve it how you like. I'm going to do like that. bit and once you're done with that once you have the proper shape you're going to click selection from path once more you're going to fill it in with black actually I'm going to put this on another layer by going to my layers dialog and creating a new layer and then filling it in click select none because you want to make it as centered as possible so take your move tool and move it as exact as you can be to be centered from the sides like this because it's important later on now you're going to take your path tool and you're going to create another path like so by clicking here clicking halfway between this and your wingtip and up here again then you're going to curve it as you like and to use a bit like that and then on this side you want to curve it so that it looks more natural a flow here from the your inside of your wing to the path. So about like that I'm going to use. And I don't think this should be as sharp, so I'm going to move it up like that. About so you should have your wing second wing tip kind of I like to refer to it as. About like that. Maybe this is a bit much. And this is the cool part. So you click on one of your ed your end points click high up into the black over here and then hold control and click your other end circle now go back over here and click selection from path and this gives you a selection and this is the fun part you take your paintbrush tool fairly big brush and f color this in oopsies I forgot another thing go to your layers dialog again make sure that your big black bat is selected like so now click select invert and take your eraser tool and erase using your discretion about like that click select none and then you're going to take your path dialog again which you can open by going to windows dockable dialog path so you're going to take that and you can see you have three paths you have your head path you have your tail path and you have your sort of wingtip path. Take that path and you want to take your flip tool which looks like sort of an opening book and in your tool options make sure that the effect is set on path. Click anywhere in your image. You might want to make this path visible again by checking this eye. And then you're going to take your path tool and move it by setting the edit mode. Move it so that these two nodes are lined up with the same spots they were on the other side. So you're going to repeat it on this side. Back, and as you can see, I've completed this respective path curve. And now you're almost done. You just click Image, Flatten Image, and then using your paintbrush, you can use black or yellow, and just touch up the sides a bit like that. And then you're done. That's about it. Subscribe if you like this video, and thanks for watching.